Today is March the 29th. Today, we see two songs in a dirge as we read Deuteronomy 32 to 34. Today, as we conclude our reading of the book of Deuteronomy, Moses sings to Israel two songs. Chapter 32 is a song in which Moses warns them to obey God. He goes back to one of the names of God that he learned the hard way, the rock. God is the rock. He repeats the rock some eight or nine times in this song. In chapter 33, Moses blesses the people of Israel tribe by tribe. Then in chapter 34, we're told of the death of Moses. Moses went alone on Mount Nebo, on a place that's called Pisgah Peak. God shows him all of the land that Israel is to occupy. And then he says, but you've sinned and you won't see it. Moses dies, the Lord buries him. They never find his body. Enjoy today as you read Deuteronomy chapters 32 to 34. Deuteronomy 32 through 34, New Living Translation. Deuteronomy 32. Listen, O heavens, and I will speak. Hear, O earth, the words that I say. Let my teaching fall on you like rain. Let my speech settle like dew. Let my words fall like rain on tender grass, like gentle showers on young plants. I will proclaim the name of the Lord. How glorious is our God. He is the rock. His decrees are perfect. Everything he does is just and fair. He is a faithful God who does nothing wrong, how just and upright he is. But they have acted corruptly towards him. When they act so perversely, are they really his children? They are a deceitful and twisted generation. This is the way you repay the Lord, you foolish and senseless people. Isn't he your father who created you? Has he not made you and established you? Remember the days long ago? Think about the generations past. Ask your father, and he will inform you. Inquire your elders, and they will tell you. When the Most High assigned lands to the nations, when he divided up the human race, he established the boundaries of the people according to the number in his heavenly court. For the people of Israel belong to the Lord. Jacob is his special possession. He found them in a deserted land, in an empty, howling wasteland. He surrounded them and watched over them. He guarded them as he would guard his own eyes, like an eagle that roused her chicks and hovers over her young. So he spread his wings to take them up and carried them safely on his pinions. The Lord alone guided them. They followed no foreign gods. He let them ride over the highlands and feast on the crops of the fields. He nourished them with honey from the rock and olive oil from the stony ground. He fed them yogurt from the herd and milk from the flock, together with the fat of the lambs. He gave them choice rams from Bashan and goats, together with the choicest wheat. You drank the finest wine, made from the juice of grapes. But Israel soon became fat and unruly. The people grew heavy, plump, and stuffed. Then they abandoned the God who had made them. They made light of the rock of their salvation. They stirred up his jealousy by worshiping foreign gods. They provoked his fury with detestable deeds. They offered sacrifices to demons which are not God, to gods they had not known before, to new gods only recently arrived, to gods their ancestors had never feared. You neglected the rock who had fathered you. You forgot the God who had given you birth. The Lord saw this and drew back, provoked to anger, by his own sons and daughters. He said, 
I will abandon them, then see what becomes of them. For they are a twisted generation, children without iniquity. They have aroused my jealousy by worshipping things that are not God's. They have provoked my anger with their useless idols. Now I will rouse their jealousy through people who are not even a people. I will provoke their anger through the foolish Gentiles. For my anger blazes forth like a fire and burns to the depths of the grave. It devours the earth and all its crops. It ignites the foundations of the mountains. I will heap disasters upon them and shoot them down with my arrows. I will weaken them with famine, burning forever, and endless diseases. I will send the fangs of wild beasts and poisonous snakes that glide on the dust. Outside, the sword will bring death, and inside, terror will strike both young men and young women, both infants and the aged. I would have annihilated them, wiping out even the memory of them, but I feared the taunt of Israel's enemies, who might misunderstand and say, Our own power has triumphed. The Lord has nothing to do with this. But Israel is a senseless nation. The people are foolish without understanding. Oh, that they were wise and could understand this. Oh, that they might know their fate. How could one person chase a thousand of them and two people put ten thousand to flight unless their rock had sold them, unless the Lord had given them up? But the rock of our enemies is not like our rock, as even they recognize. Their vine grows from the vine of Sodom and the vineyards of Gomorrah. Their grapes are poison, and their clusters are bitter. Their wine is the venom of serpents, the deadly poison of cobras. The Lord says, Am I not storing up these things, stealing them away in my treasury? I will take revenge. I will pay them back. In due time their feet will slip. The day of disaster will arrive, and their destiny will overtake them. Indeed, the Lord will give justice to his people, and he will change his mind about his servants. When he sees their strength is gone, and no one is left, slave or free, then he will ask, Where are their gods, the rocks they fled to for refuge? Where now are those gods, who ate the fat of their sacrifices, and drank the wine of their offerings. Let those gods arise and help you. Let them provide you with shelter. Look now, I myself am here. There is no other god but me. I am the one who kills and gives life. I am the one who wounds and heals. No one can be rescued from my powerful hand. Now I raise my hand to heaven and declare, As surely as I live, I will sharpen my flashing sword and begin to carry out justice. I will take revenge on my enemies and repay those who reject me. I will make my arrows drunk with blood. My sword will devour flesh, the blood of the slaughtered and the captives, and the heads of the enemy leaders. Rejoice with him, you heavens, and let all of God's angels worship him. Rejoice with his people, you Gentiles, and let all the angels be strengthened in him. For he will avenge the blood of his children. He will take revenge against his enemies. He will repay those who hate him and cleanse his people's land. So Moses came with Joshua, son of Nun, and recited all the words of this song to the people. When Moses had finished reciting all these words to the people of Israel, he added, Take to heart all the words of warning I have given you today. Pass them on as a command to your children, so they will obey every word of these instructions. These instructions are not empty words. They are your life. By obeying them, you will enjoy a long life in the land you will occupy when you cross the Jordan River. That same day, the Lord said to Moses, Now go to Moab, to the mountain east of the river, and climb Mount Nebo which is a cross from Jericho. Look out across the land of Canaan, the land I am giving to the people of Israel as their own special possession. Then you will die there on the mountain. You will join your ancestors, just as Aaron, your brother, died on Mount Hor and joined his ancestors. For both of you betrayed me with the Israelites at the waters of Meribah at Kadesh in the wilderness of Zin. You failed to demonstrate my holiness to the people of Israel there, so you will see the land from a distance, 
but you may not enter the land I am giving to the people of Israel. This is the blessing that Moses, the man of God, gave to the people of Israel before his death. The Lord came from Mount Sinai and dawned upon us. From Mount Seir he shone forth from Mount Paran. He came from Meribah Kadesh with flaming fire at his right hand. Indeed, he loves his people. All his holy ones are in his hands. They follow his steps and accept his teaching. Moses gave us the Lord's instruction, the special possession of the people of Israel. The Lord became king in Israel when the leaders of the people assembled, when the tribes of Israel gathered as one. Moses said this about the tribe of Reuben. Let the tribe of Reuben live and not die out, though they are few in number. Moses said this about the tribe of Judah. O Lord, hear the cry of Judah and bring them together as a people. Give them strength to defend their cause. Help them against their enemies. Moses said this about the tribe of Levi. O Lord, you have given your Turim and Urim, the sacred lots, to your faithful servants, the Levites. You put them to the test at Manasseh and struggled with them at the waters of Meribah. The Levites obeyed your words and guarded your covenant. They were more loyal to you than their own parents. They ignored their relatives and did not acknowledge their own children. They teach your regulations to Jacob. They give your instructions to Israel. They present incense before you and offer whole burnt offerings on the altar. Bless the ministry of the Levites, O Lord, and accept all the work of their hands. Hit their enemies where it hurts the most. Strike down their foes so they never rise again. Moses said this about the tribe of Benjamin. The people of Benjamin are loved by the Lord and live in safety beside him. He surrounds them continuously and preserves them from every harm. Moses said this about the tribe of Joseph. May their land be blessed by the Lord with precious gifts of dew from the heavens and waters from beneath the earth, with the rich fruit that grows in the sun and the rich harvest produced each month, with the finest crops of the ancient mountains and the abundance from everlasting hills, with the best gifts of the earth and its bounty and the favor of the one who appeared in the burning bush. May these blessings rest on Joseph's head, crowning the brow of the prince among his brothers. Joseph has the majesty of a young bull. He has the horns of a wild ox. He will gore distant nations, even to the ends of the earth. This is my blessing for the multitudes of Ephraim and the thousands of Manasseh. Moses said this about the tribes of Zebulun and Issachar. May the people of Zebulun prosper in their travels. May the people of Issachar prosper at home in their tents. They summon the people to the mountain to offer proper sacrifices there. They benefit from the riches of the sea and the hidden treasures in the sand. Moses said this about the tribe of Gad. Blessed is the one who enlarges Gad's territory. Gad is poised there like a lion to tear off an arm or a head. The people of Gad took the best land for themselves, and the leader's share was assigned to them. When the leaders of the people were assembled, they carried out the Lord's justice and obeyed his regulations for Israel. Moses said this about the tribe of Dan. Dan is a lion's cub, leaping out from Barshan. Moses said this about the tribe of Naphtali. O Naphtali, you are rich in favor and full of the Lord's blessings. May you possess the west and the south. Moses said this about the tribe of Asher. May Asher be blessed above other sons. May he be esteemed by his brothers. May he bathe his feet in olive oil. May the bolts of your gates be of iron and bronze. May you be secure all your days. There is no one like the God of Israel. He rides across the heavens to help you, across the skies in majestic splendor. The eternal God is your refuge, and his everlasting arms are under you. He drives out the enemy before you. He cries out, Destroy them, so Israel will live in safety. Prosperous Jacob in security. In a land of grain and wine, while the heavens drop down dew, how blessed are you, O Israel! Who else is like you, a people saved by the Lord? He is your protecting shield and your triumphant sword. 
Your enemies will cringe before you, and you will stomp on their backs. Deuteronomy 34 Then Moses went up to Mount Nebo from the plains of Moab and climbed Pishka Peak, which is across from Jericho. And the Lord showed him the whole land, from Gilead as far as Dan, all the land of Naphtali, and the land of Ephraim, and Manasseh, all the land of Judah, extending to the Mediterranean Sea, the Negev, the Jordan Valley with Jericho, the city of Palms as far as Zohar. The Lord said to Moses, This is the land I promised on oath to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob when I said, I will give it to your descendants. I have now allowed you to see it with your own eyes, but you will not enter the land. So Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab, just as the Lord had said. The Lord buried him in a valley near Beth Peor in Moab, but to this day no one knows the exact place. Moses was a 120 years old when he died, yet his eyesight was clear and he was as strong as ever. The people of Israel mourned for Moses on the plains of Moab for 30 days until the ceremonial period of mourning was over. Now Joshua, son of Nun, was full of the spirit of wisdom, for Moses had laid his hands on him. So the people of Israel obeyed him, doing just as the Lord commanded Moses. There has never been another prophet in Israel like Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face. The Lord sent him to perform all the miraculous signs and wonders in the land of Egypt against Pharaoh, and all his servants, and his entire land, with mighty power, Moses performed terrifying acts in the sight of all Israel. Like, follow, and subscribe to this devotional on whatever platform you use to listen to it. Email your questions to us at questions at becomehope.com. Tomorrow, we'll see the Lord telling Joshua to be strong and courageous.